Welcome to the Al Jazeera channel where you will learn inventory management as a core operations management activity. Inventory ordering policies address the two basic issues of inventory management, which are how much to order and when to order. The first question is answered by the economic order quantity models which are explained previously in three different videos. Here the answer of the question, when to order, is explained. The answer of this question is the function of models that identify the reorder point, ROP, in terms of a quantity, the reorder point occurs when the quantity on hand drops to a predetermined amount. That amount generally includes expected demand during lead time. There are four determinants of the reorder point quantity. The rate of demand, usually based on a forecast. The lead time. The extent of demand in or lead time variability. And the degree of stockout risk acceptable to management. There are two situations while calculating the reorder point. The first when the demand and lead time are both constant, while the second situation variability is present in demand and or lead time. In the first situation, the reorder point is simply ROP equals D multiplied by LT, where D is the demand rate, units per day or week. LT is the lead time in days or weeks. Note that demand and lead time must be expressed in the same time units. Example. A copy center uses 12 boxes of copy paper a week. The lead time is 4 days. Knowing that they work 6 days a week, calculate the reorder point. The given are the demand rate D equals 12 boxes per week and the lead time LT equals 4 days. Demand and lead time must be expressed in the same time units. So D must be divided by 6 to convert week into day as 1 week equals 6 working days. So, D equals 12 divided by 6 equals 2 boxes per day. Now we can calculate the ROP which equals D multiplied by LT equals 2 multiplied by 4 equal 8 boxes. This means that the copy center should make an order once they have 8 boxes on hand. When there is variability in demand and or lead time, it creates the possibility that actual demand will exceed expected demand and causing stockout. Consequently, it becomes necessary to carry additional inventory, called safety stock, to reduce the risk of running out of inventory during lead time. The reorder point then increases by the amount of the safety stock. So, ROP equals expected demand during lead time plus safety stock. The shown figure illustrates how safety stock can reduce the risk of a stockout during lead time. Note that stockout protection is needed only during lead time. If there is a sudden surge at any point during the cycle, that will trigger another order. Once that order is received, the danger of an imminent stockout is negligible. Because it costs money to hold safety stock, a manager must carefully weigh the cost of carrying safety stock against the reduction in stockout risk it provides. The customer service level increases as the risk of stockout decreases. Order cycle service level can be defined as the probability that demand will not exceed supply during lead time. Which means that the amount of stock on hand will be sufficient to meet demand. Hence, a service level of 95% implies a probability of 95% that demand will not exceed supply during lead time. The risk of a stockout is the complement of service level. That is, service level equals 100% minus stockout risk. Let us look at several models that can be used in cases when variability is present. The first model can be used if an estimate of expected demand during lead time and its standard deviation are available. The formula is ROP equals expected demand during lead time plus Z multiplied by sigma DLT. Where, Z is the number of standard deviations and sigma DLT is the standard deviation of lead time demand. The models generally assume that any variability in demand rate or lead time can be adequately described by a normal distribution. The value of Z used in a particular instance depends on the stockout risk that the manager is willing to accept. Generally, the smaller the risk the manager is willing to accept, the greater the value of Z. An example for this model. Suppose that the manager of a construction supply house determined from historical records that demand for sand during lead time averages 50 tons. In addition, suppose the manager determined that demand during lead time could be described by a normal distribution that has a mean of 50 tons and a standard deviation of 5 tons. Answer these questions, assuming that the manager is willing to accept a stockout risk of no more than 3%. What value of Z is appropriate? 
How much safety stock should be held? What reorder point should be used? The given our expected lead time demand equals 50 tons, sigma DLT equals 5 tons, and the stock out risk 3%. To solve the first question, we have to calculate the service level first, which equal 100 minus the stock out risk that equals 100 minus 3 equal 97% equals 0.97. So, in this table find the closest value to 0.97, here it is. Then, Find the corresponding value of Z by looking to the row and column heading. So, Z equals 1.8 plus 0.08 equal 1.88. So, the appropriate value of Z is 1.88. The second question is, how much safety stock should be held? We know that the safety stock equals Z multiplied by sigma DLT, equal 1.88 multiplied by 5 equal 9.4 tons. The third question is, what reorder point should be used? The reorder point equals expected demand during lead time plus safety stock. This equals 50 plus 9.4 equals 59.4 tons. When data on lead time demand are not readily available, the previous model cannot be used. Nevertheless, data are generally available on daily or weekly demand, and on the length of lead time. Using those data, a manager can determine whether demand in or lead time is variable, if variability exists in one or both, and the related standard deviation. For those situations, one of the following models can be used. If only demand is variable, then sigma dLt equals sigma d multiplied by square root of Lt, and the reorder point is. ROP equals d bar multiplied by Lt plus z multiplied by sigma d multiplied by square root of Lt. Where D-bar is the average daily or weekly demand, sigma D is the standard deviation of demand per day or week, and LT is the lead time in days or weeks. While, if only lead time is variable, then sigma DLT equals D multiplied sigma LT, and the reorder point is. ROP equals D multiplied by LT bar plus Z multiplied by D multiplied by sigma LT. Where D is the daily or weekly demand, LT bar is the average lead time in days or weeks, and sigma LT is the standard deviation of lead time in days or weeks. And if both demand and lead time are variable, then sigma DLT equals square root of LT bar multiplied by sigma D square plus D bar square multiplied by sigma LT square. And the reorder point is ROP equals D bar multiplied by LT bar plus Z multiplied by square root of LT bar multiplied by sigma D square plus D bar square multiplied by sigma LT square. Let us solve an example. A restaurant uses an average of 50 jars of a special sauce each week. Weekly usage of sauce has a standard deviation of 3 jars. The manager is willing to accept no more than a 10% risk of stockout during lead time, which is 2 weeks. Assume the distribution of usage is normal. Which of the above models is appropriate for this situation? Why? Determine the value of Z. Determine the ROP. The given R, the average demand D bar equals 50 jars per week, sigma D equals 3 jars, stock out risk equals 10% and the lead time LT equals 2 weeks. The answer of the first question is the second model, demand variation model, is the appropriate one because average demand, D bar, and demand standard deviation, sigma D, are given. To solve the second question, we have to find the service level first which equals 100 minus the stock out risk equals 100 minus 10 equal 90% equals 0.9. In this table find the closest value to 0.9 then find the corresponding value of Z, we obtain Z equals 1.28. To find the ROP we have to use this equation. So, ROP equals 50 multiplied by 2 plus 1.28 multiplied by 3 multiplied by square root of 2 equal 105.43. Because the inventory is discrete units, jars, we round this amount to 106. Here the issue of when to order is explained using examples. If you like this video so press like and share it. In the next video, some problems related to this issue will be solved. So. Keep following us and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Goodbye.